So today we are going over how to make uh, drawer lock joints. And specifically we use this type of bit to help put together uh, drawers for cabinets or anything like that. And it makes a nice little joint for you, but the setup can be kind of frustrating and uh, yeah, it just drives you crazy sometimes. But once you figure out how to use it um, and you've gotten the setup, it's pretty smooth and it makes a great joint. Getting into the router bit itself though, and the setup. So we have a half inch material that we're using here for our drawer sides and fronts. So what we like to do is we like to start with the router bit and we're gonna set it to about two thirds of the material um, at a height distance there. And then that's gonna give us a good starting point to uh, go ahead and make our practice cuts just so we can dial this in. As for the depth within, we're just gonna take the fence and split the bit right in half. It's, it's unplugged right now, but. So that way half the bit is exposed out here. Uh, and then we're gonna take a test run and see how that works. Now to help you set up your fence distance properly, on these woodpecker um, router plates, this is actually the center line here that runs right through the router bit and to the other side. Okay, so you can see here, our fence is pretty good. It can be over just slightly like that and you can take a flush trim bit and flush that right up because it's very close. Um, but as for our tongue, it's a little too small. So you can see it, it wants to wobble in there. So in order to increase the size of the tongue, because the groove, no matter what, is gonna be the same. What we can change is the actual tongue size. And if we need to increase the tongue size, what we wanna do is we wanna slightly raise this router bit up ever so slightly. And I mean, it literally might just need like a 16th of an inch. So we gotta really be careful bringing it up ever so slightly to make those adjustments. This is kind of where I wish I had the old uh, router lift. Would be awesome, but. So that's slightly loosen. Okay, I raised the router bit up slightly. Now I can plug my router back in. Um, but right now, the fence, I'm gonna keep the same. And then I'm just gonna run these through a couple, uh, one more time and see how close we got. Okay, now with that pass, you can see it corrected. The tongue made it a little bit bigger, and that's pretty good, but now our fence must have moved on us. So we need to increase this here by about a sixteenth of an inch. So look at our fence here. We're gonna move it back to increase that component. And again, I'm just using those marks. Oh. 
Oh, hold on a second here. I'm gonna move the fence back to where it was. Cause it looks like we had some chip out. We lost a whole piece of ply. That might be the difference there. Let's give this a, another go. Oh, get the dust collection on. Huh? And you can see here is how I made that, when I'm talking about that zero clearance here. So now as the blade comes through or the bit comes through to make the cut, it's actually going to have support uh, for the material right here and should stop our, our piece from blowing out. All right, so now that we got this bit dialed in, that was the difficult part. Now we just gotta run all our drawer components through and uh, it's smooth sailing from here on. The one thing though to remember and what I do as a best practice to make sure that I don't run into this issue is I separate my drawer sides from my drawer front and back because those components are gonna run through here differently. For instance, the drawer sides um, are going to run through, are gonna run through vertically where my drawer fronts and backs are gonna come in through horizontally. Or like I like to think about it is front flat. So just a quick way to kind of think it through. But like I said, I, I separate all my fronts and backs and then from my sides, that way I run through all the pieces flat first, horizontal, those are my front and backs. Then I can come back with my side pieces and run them all vertically. That way I'm not, you know, having to think about what piece is in my hand and then I'm gonna end up with, you know, components I can't use, so. Okay, in wrapping up this video, one more trick that I wanted to share with you that will save you time in the long run is saving a piece of scrap that you have this set to the proper height and fence depth. That will save you from having to do this every time you go to do your own drawers. So you can actually use that piece of scrap to set the depth of the router bit as well as the fence uh, distance. And then you don't have to keep doing this over and over again. The only thing is I write with a piece of pencil what the type of material was so I know if this was half inch or maybe I had a 5 eighths inch or anything like that, I keep a scrap for every one of those. That way I'm not fooling around every time I go to make, you know, drawers, which come out quite a bit. So, wrapping it up, I hope you really enjoyed the video. I hope you feel a little bit more comfortable in using this router bit. Um, there is a link below so you can check out the exact one I use. Um, but it does make a pretty good strong joint without having to go through, you know, your dovetails or something like that. Um, if it's your first time here, thank you for joining us. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Also, think about subscribing. It really helps us out as a channel. And then that way you can kind of get more quick tips, tricks, builds, tool reviews, whatever you need, we got it. So, till next time, thanks for buzzing by. You go make some dust. <laughs>